Question eight. Uh, uh, right, and look, you remember what we do? We do. Um, we, we know that if it's part one and part two, then they are connected things and, and they flow and it's kind of hence stuff. If it's parts A and B, they're completely unconnected. So here we've got a series question, but really it's two separate series questions. One word about a GP here. The first term of a geometric progression, GP, A is 50, and the common ratio is 0.8. Use logarithms to find the smallest value of k, such that the value of the kth term is less than 0.15. I saw some really poor kind of manipulating logarithms in this. People are doing really crazy things about how they link logs together. So, let's think about what the question is saying. We want the smallest value of k, such that the kth term is less than 0.15. The kth term is a r to the k minus 1. So that is 50 times 0.8 to the k minus 1. Now, this is really, really important that we all get this and we all know this. 50 times 0.8 to the k minus 1 has absolutely nothing to do with 40 to the k minus 1. We understand this. Because lots of us made this mistake. Because the power applies only to the thing immediately before it. If there'd been a bracket around all of this, we could have said it was 40 to the k minus 1, but it, there was no bracket. The, this 50 doesn't have this power, so we can't combine the 50 and the 0.8. So those of you who went straight to writing 40 to the k minus 1 had, had really lost the remaining marks. There was no coming back from that. Really. That's a really important thing to remember first. We want this to be less than 0.15. The second really important thing about logarithms and how we, we work through powers and deal with this that we need to remember about this question is that taking logs of both sides now, while not immediately a mistake, is almost certain to lead you into a mistake. So don't don't copy this down. This this would be what somebody who was heading for all, to, heading towards a mistake would do with this. They would write log in front of both sides. Now what they've written there isn't immediately incorrect, but what they've written there is almost certainly going to lead them into an incorrect moment straight after it, where they write k minus one times log 50 times 0.8. Okay? And can you see what we've done? We've, in effect, we've done the same thing as if we called it 40 to the k minus 1. We pretended that the k minus 1 was the power of everything, and it wasn't. Um, having done, I'm going to delete that line now, having done the first red line that I've written there, you could still sort this out if you wrote it as being log 50 plus log 0.8, that would be all right, and then you could recover it from there. But I wouldn't have done any of that. I would have said, your next move, the smartest next move, is to divide by 50, so you've just got the term with its power on its own. So 0.8 to the k minus 1 is less than, and what do you get, is it 0.003? Is that right? If you divide 0.15 by 50, we get that. Have I done that right? Is there anybody checking that? <coughs> yes, 0 0.003. Right. Now we can take logarithms. Now we're okay because we've got a single term to a power. So log 0.8 to the k minus 1 is less than log 0.03. k minus 1, log 0.8 is less than that. So k minus 1 is less than, oh, hang on, yeah, remember this as well, this is full of little traps, this question, isn't it? Remember that if you divide by a negative number, you've got to flip the inequality sign. And we don't always notice it with logs, but if we're doing the log of something between 0 and 1, then that's negative. Log of 0.8 is negative. 
So I should have swapped that over at that point to say that. So k is greater than log 0 0.003 over the log of 0 0.8 plus 1. And if you carefully put that into your calculator, that is 27 point something, 27.03. And of course, we are saying that k has to be greater than 27.03, and k is an integer, k is the number of terms. Therefore, k is 28. Right. Come on, can we uh, keep quiet and concentrate on this? So that's, uh, you can see, I thought that was probably the most difficult four marks on the paper. I think there's so many opportunities to go wrong in that. And it's only four marks. So you know, that, was, that was, I think, the toughest point. Um, part B was an awful lot easier. One of the problems was people, people got bogged down in part A and then thought, oh, I can't do this series stuff. I'll solve for a little bit and then go on to question nine. In a different geometric progression. So it's, we're starting again now. The second term is minus 3 and the sum to infinity is 4. Show that there is only one possible value of the common ratio and hence find the first term. We read that and we should think, hey, why are they saying there's only one possible value? And then you think, ah, but, but wait, it said the sum to infinity. And the sum to infinity is only valid if r is between minus 1 and plus 1. So you're already starting to think where we're heading to with this. Right, let's turn some of these words into some mathematical statements. The second term is minus 3. The second term is a times r. And we're also told that the, the uh, sum to infinity, a over 1 minus r, is 4. And, and uh, this was, you know, there were lots of marks given for this question. If, if marks were quite expensive up here, they were quite cheap here, because we've got two just for writing those two things down. One for each of those. So now we've got simultaneous equations which we need to solve. Um, I, we're looking for r, <coughs> this, aren't we, really? So I think what we're going to do is we're going to write a is minus 3 over r, and we're going to substitute for a. So minus 3 over r divided by 1 minus r is 4. It looks like a fairly horrible equation, but we're going to multiply through by the 1 minus r. To get that. Is that right? I did that in two steps. That's four brackets, one minus r, which gives us four minus four r. And now we're going to multiply by r. And we were kind of expecting, as soon as they said, show that there's only one value, we're expecting there's going to be multiple values, so we were thinking we're likely to get, actually I'm not, I'm going to take it to the other side. We're likely to get a uh, quadratic out of this. 4r squared minus 4r minus 3 is 0. And you get to that same point by doing it so it equals a on both sides and combine them. So it equals, yeah, you can, yeah. Yeah, that would work, wouldn't it? Um, so now we've got a quadratic which we're going to try and solve correctly, hopefully. We could use the formula or we could try and factorise it. You know that method that we use for factorising, that's minus 12r squared. So that's minus 6 and plus 2. Is that right? Yeah. So 4r squared minus 6r plus 2r minus 3 is 0, giving us 2r, 2r minus 3, plus 2r minus 3 is 0. So we've got the whole thing as 2r plus 1. 2r minus 3, which gives us, as we expected, two values. r is minus a half, and r is 3 over 2. That we're not very really surprised to have got those two values, we expected that. Um, now we're remembering back to that thing, this is all about a sum to infinity, and a sum to infinity requires that r is between minus 1 and plus 1. <coughs> A 
as sum to infinity exists, the uh, modulus of r, the size of r, must be less than 1. r must be between minus 1 and plus 1. So r equals minus a half is the only value. There we go, so we've entered that bit. And it did say, it say, show that there's only one possible value of common ratio done, and hence find the first term. So, if r equals minus a half, remember a was minus 3 over r, and minus 3 divided by minus a half gives us plus 6. And there's our value for a, how we've done it. Okay, it was important that we, we explained why there was only one value of r that we could use and just blunder on with both of them. Okay? And that's maths.